Well, every once in a while we have to put some wood on the fire, don't we? <laughs> so, having a fire in a workshop it does make a difference <laughs> it's like having another person with you there you know you don't feel so alone sometimes being in a studio can be a lonely experience but having a fire <clears throat> he's a friend to me <laughs> of course the fire is very useful not just to keep to keep us warm but I've got hot water here next to the stove in a, in a enamel jug, just up against the side of the stove, and that keeps the water nice and warm. As well as that, of course, I've got down here a, a saucepan of water, which I put on top of the stove. As you can see, on the top of the stove, I've got some pieces of work which have been glazed and are waiting to go into the Raku fire. And that's another very useful re and necessary reason to have a stove. You can quickly dry pots. So, that's that. We'll just shut that fellow up. I want to go, let's go over to the decorating, to my banding wheel. I've got some more pots I want to decorate and we can talk about that as we go. Okay? Let's go. Let's go there. Now I may just have to adjust the legs of the tripod here because we were a little low there. So we'll just open the uh, legs out to their max. There we are. I'm trying to get down to doing a bit of decorating. Um, so, let's see, yeah, we'll keep it a bit like that, I think. Um, So here we are. I've actually, I went online just recently and, and I've ordered a new banding wheel. Bigger than this. Because this one's a bit small, you know. But he's okay, he works. He works. So, so clean my glasses a minute. Yeah, well, what I want to do is, these are just some small little regular bottle vases that have been glazed with a, um, my 80-10-10 recipe that uh, you saw me making up just the other day. So, now I've got some, um, some copper carbonate here. Let me just let me just swing that around a bit further, maybe like that. Okay, so I've got here. I'm working actually. I'm using. Whoops. Knocking everything over. I'm working here off a off a piece of glass. It's actually a mirror. But it doesn't matter, you can use a tile, something like that, a piece, of, a piece of glass anyway, is good, or a glazed surface that's flat to work off. For putting your pigments in, etc. Also, this is a small little, um, with, with small compartments, as you can see, which is also, also good for some things. I, I tend to like to work off a bigger, a bigger palette, you know what I mean. So, 
what we're going to do is, I'm just going to get this, um, this is copper carbonate here. So, important thing is to get the to get the thickness right on the brush. You don't want it too watery for obvious reasons because otherwise you won't get the strength of the colour of the pigment coming through onto, on, onto the pot. Conversely, you don't want to have it too thick. If it's too thick, it won't flow off the end of the brush and it'll be claggy, you know, it'll be claggy and kind of like mud. We don't want to be mixing mud on the end of our brush and try to paint that on in a nice, graceful way. It won't work. So it's important just to get this, um, the combination of, of the amount of, of oxide and water combination to get that right. Um, it's experience and a bit, of, a bit of trial and error. I do use alongside a, a brush stand okay because it, it stops your brushes rolling away how many of us have had brushes that have rolled off the table into the dirt if you use a brush stand you can just take a small piece of clay and roll it out and then use that as a brush stand indent indent it with with the brush itself okay right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to first of all we're going to we're going to get this on center tap center it on the banding wheel Okay that 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 takes a little practice but you can do it Actually, I'm, I'm more used to doing it this way. So I'm putting a couple of little lines along at, at the top here. A couple of, of little banded lines. And now I've got to do a decoration on here. Um, and somebody asked me to do so When you do brush, brush decoration, you want to relax a bit. You don't want to be tense, because if you're tense, you won't get a, a relaxing, fluid line or curve. You'll get a kind of stiff, sort of contrived, not a very, not a very nice. So just, just relax. Just relax a bit before, before you do this. I'm doing a something it, this is a pot I did once and somebody wanted another one and if it doesn't work out exactly don't panic okay just have a little laugh to yourself don't get too serious about it Na 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 na, ni na na na. Na na na. I'm going to change brushes now. I'm changing. I'm changing down to a smaller one. That's this one. 
because I want to get some kind of lines, finer lines, coming out of this. This is a, a decoration I just did once in my life. And somebody, of course, wants me to do it again, wants to repeat. And I'm not really one for doing orders particularly. I don't really like doing orders. I just like to do my own work. If, if you get involved in trying to fulfill lots of orders, unless they are orders of, let's say, repeat functional wear, if you, you know, if you're, if you've got more individual pots that you've made and somebody wants to have a repeat of it, I don't like doing that really because, you know, it's it never really comes out quite as you want it. They're not really satisfied, and it's just a hassle the whole thing. Anyway, this, this one I've now done, this is the second time I, I, I've, I've done this one. I don't know how it's looking. It's a funny kind of decoration. I suppose it's a sort of plant, isn't it? But then you see, a lot of things, they start out. They start out as a, an idea, uh, something that you've seen, or you could say something like a cactus or something like that and then you sort of as you do it you then you you add to it or you slightly change it and you make it something slightly different but it doesn't matter you get your inspiration say from nature and you take it and then you adapt it to your own your own style my father had a a design that he used to my father was david leach he used to have a, a design that he used to do um, repeatedly. It was a sort of standard decoration that he did on, on many, many different kinds of pots. Some of his individual pots and some of his um, uh, the standard wear range of pots that we had, like mugs and, um, and jugs <coughs> or pitchers. Um, plates and things like that had this decoration on, on them and um, I'll do it for you <laughs> I used to do them you see when I used to work at the pottery I'm going to do it on a mirror but I'll just I'll just demonstrate it to you Oops. Don't let me, don't let me, uh, don't let me forget the <laughs> the reason I'm mentioning this to you because, in fact, the 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 decoration uh, was known as a foxglove decoration, and it started out as a foxglove, but it kind of got it got changed slightly. I'll do it for you anyway. Um, I'll do it here on this mirror. So, I hope it'll work on the mirror. So we had one stroke like that. Oops. So one side looked like that. And then we did one on the other side here. kind of behaves a little bit different doing it on on glass than what it does doing it on the actual absorbent texture of the of the glaze on the outside of the pot okay so we did that and that would be we do that in we do that in iron oxide and then he would have these finer lines that came that that, that, that came out from it
So it looked like that, you see, when it, when it was completed. It was a very, it was a decoration that went on a lot of pots. It seemed to fit on pots, you know. Some decorations, they adapt easily to a flat shape, a round shape, or a shape, you know, with different curves on it. It, it, it seemed, it seemed to, to, to work quite well. Uh, but that, that was a typical example of a decoration that started out as a foxglove. And some of the earlier, the earlier designs that we did were somewhat different than this. I was not in the pottery working at that time. I was a small boy. But um, the ones that I've seen since were somewhat different than that. But then they later, they later be became, they turned out later to be like that. And that was a sort of finished, the finished one that we used to do at the pottery, that's at Lower Down Pottery in Devon, England, my dad's pottery, which incidentally where my brother Jeremy is still working and um, although the house has been sold he's got this arrangement with the, with the, new, the new owner of the house and, and so the pottery continues, which is good news. Um, for how long I'm not sure. Anyway, that little pot is, is um, a little bottle vase and um, I've got two more there to do. I may do something slightly different on these. Let's just band it anyway. When you're banding you need to hold your hand steady don't want to do it with your hand floating, okay? Brace your hand, keep it really steady. All right, so we've 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 put a couple of banded lines Sometimes it's good to do a thick line and then a thin line underneath it. I don't know if you can see that. Let's just change the focus on the camera if I can. I don't know if you can see that. You get a thick line and then a thin line. The one I did here was similar. You see? It's sort of, it's a place to start, it's, of course when you're, when you're putting banded lines on a pot, you're kind of defining, defining the, slightly the area where you're going to put your decoration. And, and it's not that you always need to uh, band uh, on the lip of a pot by any means. But, it, on the other hand, it, it works well to, to do that sometimes. Okay, so that one is banded. we will better put the focus back. I have to keep remembering to adjust the focus on this camera. So, uh, while I'm here, let me just show you some decorations that I've already done um, yesterday or the day before on a few other pots just while we're here talking about this because it's important, I think, to bring this in um, because we all need help with how to decorate a pot. It's not easy, is it? <laughs> By any means. By any means, no! These are rather hot, they're off the stove.
I'm going to adjust the focus once again, quickly. Okay, I'm going to have to be quick with these because they're hot. I won't be able to hold them for very long. This pot is only glazed on the inside. All right, because the outside is left unglazed and that's going to go black. The whole of the outside will be black, as a raku pot is. The inside is where there will be... Uh, where you can see there is the white frit glaze on the inside, but that's just going to go crackly. That'll have a finish similar to the inside of, of that. You can see the carbon I was talking about in the other clip there that is still, is still waiting to be cleaned off. So there's that one, okay? You know, the question, the question you have to ask, your, ask yourself when you're, when, you're, you know, when, you're, when, you're, when you're glazing and decorating is how much glaze and where to put it. And if you're going to decorate it, how are you going to do it? This is a small bowl that, as you can see, it's trimmed in the foot. And when I threw it, I, I, co I did these lines. I kind of combed these lines in the side of the bowl. It was then trimmed here. So it has a, a graceful feel to it. It's only got glaze on the inside, and it won't have anything added to it because it's a raku glaze, and raku in itself is um, a decoration in itself because of all that crackle going on. So you don't want to overcomplicate it. So I'm going for clean lines, a clean look, and simplification, just glaze on the inside. And I think that that's going to be enough. Okay? So that's that one. Let's look at this. This is slightly more, this is slightly more jazzy. This is a kind of tea bowl, which is glazed on the inside, and then on the outside, I've squirted with a um, like one of these one of these guys hold holding the pot and then and then squirting these lines down across you see first you go in one direction and then you go in the other direction and that gives you it gives you that design which is a kind of random design of crisscrossed lines when in Raku, this looks very good because you have the contrast of the crisscross lines with the black unglazed bits in between, and you get a very crisp look to the pot. Trimmed foot, as you can see. All right. Have a go at doing something like that with just crisscrossing. You'll find that it's very satisfying. And lastly, here. Again, another bowl similar to, to, to this bowl, but this one is done slightly different. This is more elaborate. Well, not saying it's elaborate, but it's, it's glazed over the, the change of angle there, just over, I've just passed. Same kind of bowl with a trimmed foot, graceful stem. But this one, I've done a, a grass decoration in copper oxide, all right, which I quite like this natural look of grasses. It, I always start, find it attractive, okay? But nothing going on on the inside, just the simple crackle, all right? See, decorating, we tend to be too complicated. You've got to get simple simplify ourselves somewhat. <laughs> Sometimes just let that, that thought, that decoration come from up with, from within you, you know? And then just do it. You may have to wash it off. <laughs> I've done that lots of times. You, you make a decoration, you do a decoration, then you think, oh, ah, you know? But you know, it's all a learning experience. Um, I've got a pot here. This is just a round pot. 
trimmed foot. I'm waiting to do this one. It'll probably be glazed on the inside. On the, on the outside, I may do a, a kind of contrasty decoration. Maybe I'll show it to you when I've done it. Anyway, that's all for now, folks. Um, be inspired. Keep practicing. See you next time. Bye-bye. Dee-dee-dee-dee. <laughs>